So time is really precious during the harvesting season. If you don't get it in out of the field, if you don't get it off of the tree before it falls onto the ground, it can be contaminated, it could freeze, it could, all sorts of things could be happening, bugs could get into it. And so getting it off the tree is paramount. Getting it into your house, off the tree, into the house is paramount. Once you have it in here, if you've got 20 bushel of fruit in here, and you're only one person, you're always only one person, but say for instance the only person available is you to get it processed, which is the case for me this year. I have two kids in school, and so this year I'm, ha I'm doing it solo. How am I going to keep this fruit from going bad? So what I do is I alternate between dehydrating and freezing. Dehydrating, it's in its permanent condition. There we go. I can put this in plastic bags. I don't need a freezer. It's just ready to go. So these are prunes. Our Italian prune trees uh, make amazing prunes. Uh, the difference between a plum and a prune is that a prune is going to be firm and flavorful, but not super, super juicy. I dehydrate these whole. They still have pits in them. When I put them on top of each other, they, there's like a gap of a half inch gap between each tray because they're resting on fruit instead of on the tray rims and it just doesn't matter. <laughs> I did this as an experiment. I just, I was frantic to get prunes done because I had peaches to do that were not going to be able to be dehydrated this way. So what I did is I came in and dumped in a massive tray of plums so they were all touching. It takes about two days for prunes to dehydrate all the way down, but they're so easy to do. I also do not wash them. I don't turn the plums up really hot. They are at 90, four degrees, something like that. And again, two days and my kids love these and they're not super, super sweet. They're very flavorful, but they don't have a lot of sugar in them. All right, when you're doing prunes, this is what it starts out like. There's almost no space in between the fruit because they're, gonna, they're going to shrink so much. There's no point in having it be just a few. There's really no point. And it's gonna have a big gap because it's going to be resting on those prunes instead of instead of the shelves touching and resting on each other they're going to rest on the prunes it takes about two days okay now take one and bite it in half not lengthwise but around the middle and show them what it looks like <laughs> okay back. okay why do you like the half done mushy ones that have been in the dehydrator only half the time um I like the ones that have been in only half the time because they're just as sweet and as these ones and they're mushy. Whereas these ones are sweeter than these ones. And it's just like honey, but they're not very mushy. You like the mushy ones? Mm -hmm. Should I keep a bag of just mushy ones so that we can see if they the turn out as good? Ones? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So you want to keep a bag of the half done ones and see if you like them as well as the fully done ones. Yeah. We'll see if they mold or not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. These are the ones that Kai wanted me to not dehydrate all the way since they did indeed mold. So it is better to dehydrate your plums until they're fully, fully dry. Good morning guys, so this morning I wanted to retrofit a solar dehydrator out of a shelf and my insect netting that came from AgriFabric. Uh, it's doing a great job over the brassicas, but I kind of want to take that apart and start a solar dehydrator 
My little airbnb -er has been drying zucchini in our open air dehydrator and she's had good success with that. What I wanna try now is long slices of zucchini that would allow me to dehydrate them for using as lasagna noodles in the winter. So I'm gonna get a bookshelf and my agrofabric uh, bug netting and some uh, clothespins and we're gonna see what we can do to make a solar dehydrator this morning. Now, it doesn't matter that this is not food grade. The plastic itself is not coming in contact with any food, so just really doesn't matter. It's just gonna be uh, an air buffer between the dehydrator and bugs. And I don't have to cut the bug netting. I can use it again as bug netting, but right now when I have a glut of zucchini on, I can bring out my zucchini, let it dehydrate. It would be better if it wasn't in the sun. So if I had something like this that was uh, darker, it would work even better because it does affect dehydrated products when they're exposed to bright sunlight. But it means if I, if I see that this works, I can probably find a dark one. But it means I didn't have to put any money into trying to figure out if it would work for the actual dehydrating part. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a try.
I just look at it and I'm like, mm -hmm. they haven't re-styled it in all those years. There's a reason. It's because it works. All right, so we had to bring these guys in because it got really windy. But after that first initial amount of heat on the deck, they're still dehydrating. These guys were not dry when I brought them in, but now they are. You can hear how crunchy they are. These guys are fully dry. So I need to take all these out instead of taking them back out. But the reason I want to take them out is because these guys that have been in the house are not dry at all. So I need to hang them up in the dehydrator. Alright, so just so you see this, I put the, the, the shelf on top of the fabric too, and that way no bugs can get up from underneath the deck. And then I just wrap it around. This piece here is the piece that's under, and you see there's an overlap. And then I just use a clothespin to close it up here. None of these little pieces would work in the shelf itself because they're too small. As they shrink, they would just fall through. So having them on the string works best and then you can just peel them off and harvest the buttons off as you need to.
So I'm standing in front of the shredded zucchini and then the sliced zucchini. This is just a bookshelf with some bug netting on it and it worked really well, very fast, easy to move in and out of the house. This also worked well and it worked better for uh, juicier products because the holes in between the spaces on this shelf are too wide unless you have trays, which would be another purchase. So I think this was a huge success, it's a three to one. One part zucchini to three parts water is what Jessie told me. She's over at Practical Revolution. Make sure to go check her out. She's made some videos about what she's been doing here on the property. And then with these, I would imagine it's the same three to one, but what I'll probably be using these in is casseroles and it's in, in the place of noodles. If you've heard, heard of zoodles, that's what I'd be doing with it. Um, the strings that I had been dehydrating in the house were super, super slow to dehydrate, obviously. It's what I assumed, but I wanted to try it out. Kitty, you better stay out. Stay out. Um, and so we, we hung them on this as well, brought it back out for a few days. They're totally dehydrated. The first things to dehydrate were the big, long pieces that were supposed to be used in, in maybe lasagna, and they dried so fast. Um, I'm not sure why there was the difference, between the little medallions and the big long pieces, but that was the case. Super sold on this and um, happy to have it. I like that it's a bigger, a bigger platform. This one, um, it, you, you just have to keep it rotated a little bit faster because it's a smaller space on this one, but I really like it as well. So hopefully that was helpful. We'll talk to you later.